Hello, my name is Tom Otley and I'm the editor of Business Traveller. Welcome to the latest of our videos. There's been some research uh, released this week by the journal Nature Climate Change. And what it has done in this bit of research is look at the amount of emissions um, that have gone down during the pandemic. Um, and it looks through all the different sectors, but as you can imagine, aviation has been particularly affected um, by the pandemic. In fact, um, aviation emissions, this is CO2 emissions, have gone down 75% um, in some of the countries where lockdown has been enforced. And it looks like um, over the course of the year, um, obviously aviation is going to be down more than many other sectors, industry, agriculture, that sort of thing. Um, what environmental campaigners are hoping is that this can be a kind of new normal where uh, the amount of flying goes down and also those people who are about to get back um, onto planes perhaps think twice about it, uh, reducing demand overall. To find out more I spoke with Todd Paglia who's um, head of Stand Earth. So so then Todd, um, thanks very much for uh, speaking with us today. Um, Obviously, emissions have gone down this year. Um, the real question is whether they're going to be down next year or not. And I was wondering what sort of lessons you think corporates can can take from, from what's happened over the last two, three months. Well, it's been a time of serious discovery for big companies, uh, and they've realized that they don't need to travel so much. And I think what you're seeing out there is a lot of people who traveled all the time are really liking not traveling so much. And so I think if you look at this sector, though, the sector runs actually on corporate flights, even though companies represent only 12 percent of your average flight as far as passengers, they represent 75 percent of the profit. Um, and that's because they fly very expensively. They change their tickets constantly. Uh, they do short buys, meaning like tomorrow they're going to fly. Um, and if they change like they have in the last few months, airlines will follow. And so that's what we're focusing on is how do we get businesses to say there's a new normal and it means not traveling every week, every two weeks, maybe not even every month. Let's travel when we have to, not when we feel like we're sort of compelled to um, because it's not necessary. That's what we've really learned in the last uh, three months. And when people I mean, when people are looking at this for the first time, I think. Um, they think, yeah, it makes sense. Let's let's fly less because that's good for the environment. But when you look at the the figures, obviously aviation and the airlines point this out constantly is a very very small part of overall emissions. So you've got, let's say, you know, industry is forty percent or power is thirty percent. Maybe agriculture's up there. So so why do you think aviation is is so important and and we, it should be targeted in this way? Well, aviation is actually pretty big. First of all, if it were a country it would be in the top 10 emitters. So it would be a top 10 country as far as climate pollution. It's growing very quickly, at least up until the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and I think thirdly, the really the big issue here is every single sector, every component says, I'm small, I don't need to change. And that is the way to end up with a completely catastrophic climate crisis. Every single sector that you ever talk to says, well, I'm not the problem. Somebody else is much bigger um, and we have to change all of them. I think one of the tough things for the aviation industry, unlike perhaps um, you know, industry, is that it's quite difficult for them to find alternative fuels. I mean, there's a chance, for instance, that wind power and solar can help industry in time. You know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, research and a lot of effort going into that, but it's, it's quite difficult for aviation. And that sort of points to an idea that uh, you have to reduce the amount of demand rather than just hoping that a technological fix will come along. Right. And I think we're going to actually see that in a lot of areas where, you know, the quick technological fix is very hard to come by in a lot of sectors. Um, I think it's even harder to come by when you're not trying. And aviation is not trying real hard. Um, I think if business flyers say we wanna, we're going to fly less and we're, we want to fly with lower emissions, you'll see real R&D investment. Um, and you're starting to see little bits of it. You know, there's a nine person uh, electric plane that is now being put into service um, in my area in the Pacific Northwest of North America. Uh, we have float plane companies moving to all electric. Um, so it's possible. It's, you know, for short haul flights, um, it's possible. Much can be gained in efficiency. 
Um, but all that needs to be driven, I think, by consumers and by business flyers demanding that the airline industries move on this issue, and they have not moved much for decades. I was wondering if you could tell us um, something about um, your charity and the way that it works to try and change things for the better. Sure. Well, at Stand.Earth, we really try to follow the money. So when we look at a sector that needs to change, if it's the logging industry, um, we're not necessarily going to talk to logging companies. We're going to talk to the end companies with big brands and public exposure um, who are buying the wood, paper, and pulp. Same thing for the airline industry. When we look at this sector, um, we really wanted to focus on what's the one component that's driving this entire industry and it's business flyers. And so that's a pretty small group. They've now learned a lot in the last few months and they're increasingly motivated to cut climate pollution, um, whether it's in their own operations or through third parties like airlines uh, that they fly on. And so we think they can be motivated for change. Uh, they're taking action in a lot of areas but some of them don't realize that flying is their biggest single impact. Um, and so we're going to be bringing that message to companies. And we think they're going to be open to saving money, cutting climate emissions, cutting the wear and tear on their people, because it just beats people up to travel like this. Um, and it can be a win-win for everybody. And the airline industry is going to have to adjust to a completely different new normal um, as we go forward. Most airlines uh, claim that they're moving towards net zero. They're nowhere near it yet, but they think they're going to get there by 2040 or 2050. But a lot of that net zero involves actually more flying, but but things like carbon offsetting. I, I wonder, I mean, do you think there's any sort of basis for hope in, in offsetting? Uh, we don't believe in offsetting. Uh, it's a bit of a shell game. It's been, uh, over the last two decades, a wild west of irresponsible um, sort of you know, do what you want to do, pay a couple of bucks, and magically the problem goes away. And we have two decades of experience showing that it doesn't work. Uh, so every industry, including the airline industry, needs to reduce its direct emissions, not try to buy its way out of a problem because it's not working.